Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is Curse of Strahd. I've been doing some stuff in the background, so I just wanted to give you a bit of a catch up with what I've done. Um, I decided that the uh, Barovia village needed a village map. So while there is accessible through the journal for them to go and see it, I thought it would be nice to give them a scene and put some map pins on it for them. Now with these map pins, they actually can't see them. Um, so I created a new journal called Map Pins that I'm going to use for all of my maps that basically the players can't see. Um, so what it means is that actually I can describe the map and it's very useful for me going, oh yeah, that's Brindaroth Mercantile, or that's Mad Mary's house, etc. So it's useful for me when I'm looking at it to see, to remember where these are. And a lot of these maps are really good because um, mm -hmm. the buildings... These red buildings are the ones that correlate with the, you know, the main areas and stuff like that. So it makes it nice and easy. But once this scene is not available to the players, they can't see it in their top, um, in their top navigation here uh, until I tell them to. So my plan is, is actually when they're in Barovia, all I'm going to do is I can go to configure and I'll say, yeah, show it in the navigation. Yeah. Um, and well, I just change it to all players so that then they can actually access that in and around Barovia. If they want to jump over and have a look at the map, they can do just to remind themselves a bit of flavor. Yes, it is raining pretty much everywhere within um, within Barovia. So with that in mind, um, I also went to Velaki and did the same thing and just imported the map for Velaki. Exactly the same process. Because uh, I put all the dots on because they go, oh, where is such and such? And I'm like, um, and I don't want to be fumbling through the module. So for me, I want to be able to come here and just go, oh, yes, OK. So that is, you know, you need to turn left out of there. You head down to the main road that passes through the town. And it's pretty much first on the right, you'll see the word blue water in it or whatever it might be. It's just going to make my life easier as the DM. And again, it just gives them something they can reference. So a few other bits that I did. Um, I did go into the East Gate. Um, and uh, I added on uh, the extra level for the top of the tower and put the guards in there. So I've just basically I've been reading through the module again, following through the module and saying, right, are there changes that I need to make to my maps? Um, putting in NPCs and things, because we were just doing the maps before, to make sure that everything lines up and makes sense. So I've slapped a couple of guards in. Uh, the blue water in. Did I do anything with the blue water? I'm not sure that I did actually. Um, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. So I went through and I've populated the blue water in. I've put some random people in. There's a couple of the um, a, a couple of hunters. You've got the wrong name. <laughs> You've got the wrong name. You're supposed to be. Uh... See, it is handy doing this because. While I don't have it that the players can see the token names, uh, again, for me as the DM, it's like, yeah, who's who? I can just hover over and it will tell me, why are you upstairs? Don't know why he's upstairs. But again, I've got all my I've got all my actors. Get rid of the monsters for a moment. I've got you can see I went through all of the NPCs and it's like, right, who do I need? Let's drag you out right now. Um, still says you're 10 foot. Why are you 10 foot? Nope, sorted it. You're 10 foot. I must have uh, I must have dragged them out when I was on the wrong thingy. Um, who was he? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so I hadn't updated the token name. So I'm going to do that right now because that's going to, I don't know about you, but that's going to annoy the cack out of me. Um, let's just copy his name because it's easier to do it this way. Go into his token um, and just change the token name. Lovely jubbly. Um, and of course, I can select that and I can just say assigned token. Have I done it the wrong way around? I've done it the wrong way around and I always do that. It's much easier to... Uh, yeah, so I could have updated the token and then updated the proto-token proto from it. I did it the wrong way round. I always do because I tend to do it this way round. All right, so we've got, um, yeah, so we've got some peasants, peasant one. These names don't show up to the players, so that doesn't matter. They're just there for background. I do have the two uh, watchster 
kids in here with Rictavio and I've got um, Erwin in here, Erwin's wife and if I'm correct upstairs I've got the two boys up here. Uh, I'm not sure why he says where at. <laughs> oh that's brilliant. Uh, yeah not sure why he says where at. Um, how bizarre. Oh it's because they are. Uh, they, yeah, they are. Although they're children, they are were rats. Um, Erwin and uh, Danica. Uh, yeah, Danica are actually were. They're um, sorry, not were rats. They're were ravens. But I used the were rat as a uh, just as a template to slap them on, and I just didn't update the name. So yeah, with characters like that, uh, I did go through and actually uh, update. Our character sheets, as you can see, we've got minimum degree, regeneration, etc. So um, I did base them rather than just going, oh, we're plain NPC. These are actually combat ready and capable. Um, so they've got their yeah their features and things that they need should something kick off and they are required to engage. Um, hopefully not though. That's not the intention. But you know who knows? Uh, I don't know. Big fight breaks out with the brothers or something silly so uh, basically I've gone through and this is this is just what I've done uh, the town square I've not touched that since we last looked at it just got those little animations on smoke um, I went through the church and just went through the story of the church decided if there was any changes I need to make back to the uh, the ground floor uh, so I've put in the appropriate um, tokens in approximately the right place uh, including this chap down here from the coffin the coffin maker um, so that all kind of matches up and makes sense now ready to go when the players arrive it's sorted uh, we've got the uh, the peasanty house here as well now th there's not actually map provided for this because actually it's very much story oriented but I did want to give them a little home uh, especially when they realize how small this home is compared to the amount of kids living here I wanted to give them an idea of like these people are poor um, and this chap what's his name I've forgotten it oh yeah <laughs> Millie Vosh Millie 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 Vo. Um, they call him Milo the, his siblings call him Milo which is much easier um, you know it, give, it demonstrates his motivation for uh, for certain activities he does based on the fact he's got all these kids he's trying to provide for um, as their big brother um, I went through the stockyard again, so we built that in the last uh, the last video. Um, and what I've done is gone and got some of the uh, Forgotten Adventures assets for some of the carts and things, and I've just sort of like put them in as well as the uh, the two main NPCs here. So I've just added those in, and Rick Tavens, Rick Tover, whatever his name is, I put his wagon in here as well. So it's just adding a few assets to bring this a bit to life. Obviously, there's lots of other things I could bring in. I do want to be slightly cautious about how many assets on a screen. This map is quite high def anyway, um, and they do need to be wary about things um, just going a bit nuts, really. Uh, now, did I make him a shop? I think I did. So actually, if they want to, yeah, if they want to um, engage with Gunthar, he is a shop. Um, I cloned the one from Barovia, from um, um, Buildrath's Mercantile. Um, so I just cloned him and uh, changed the prices, basically, because that, that made sense. In fact, actually, if I zoom in, <laughs> I've not changed his, his hover name either. Now, that is going to annoy me because... Uh, what will happen is um, they will come and they'll say, oh yeah, blah, 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 and he'll introduce himself as Brindroth, and they will laugh at me because they will realise that, um, that I've got it wrong, um, and they will be absolutely correct that I've got that wrong as well. Uh, there we go, that's just easiest to do it that way. Brilliant. Now when I hover over it, you're peasant one, aren't you? See, I give them these names. And then I leave them called Peasant One. Ah, oh dear. Again, let's just make sure. Yep, yep, you're good. Thank you very much. That's better. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I just went and did a few things like that. Obviously, not particularly well. <laughs> um, I also built the Coffin Maker's House. So, I made a start on this. Um, and this is what's going to bring us on to the sort of like the what we need to do in this video. So, I've just slapped out the Coffin Maker's House. Uh, I've still got my grid on. So I need to obviously do a little bit of configurating there. A grid, yes, it's fine to have one, but I want it 
to be invisible. Thank you very much. Lighting, uh, global illumination. Yes, that's a bit that I often forget. Um, so that's all fine. Uh, now, obviously, I have already put in the walls. You've seen me do that hundreds of times. I'll just zoom that in nicely so my uh, my QA in the comments can just check I've not missed anything. <laughs> I know, I know, it's a game you play and you love it. There is one thing I haven't done, is do the stairs that lead upstairs. Um, so which direction do they go? So they go upstairs this way, to heading towards the bottom of the map, and they pop out here at the top. So uh, that's quite easy, you've seen me do this before. Uh, I need to have, I need to be on the ground floor. I need to have this place drawings of stairs highlighted. And then I can just draw whatever shape it is that I want. I'm going to snap it to grid and I can just draw that and that's automatically going to become stairs. It's hidden uh, and that's it. That's all I need to do. So anybody stepping onto this will automatically be popped up the top here. I haven't done the lights in here, which I need to do. Um, so that's the next thing to do. I have got all the walls here again. Let's uh, on the first floor, just check that we're happy with those walls. Yeah, I haven't missed anything. No, we're all good. Brilliant. Uh, and of course I have put in the region just to make sure that any weather effects aren't included. Uh, again, um, using um, Forgotten Adventures I have put in these coffins. So I've put in a coffin and then I've put a lid over the top of it so that I can delete the lid um, if these coffins get opened. So remember this is, this is one of those things that this is not in the original um, the original Curse of Strahd module, but this is part of the Strahd Reloaded where they've redone this and instead of the crates we've got some coffins. I didn't have some coffins, so uh, Forgotten Adventures, again it's one of their free asset packs so anybody can get access to them which is great. I've slapped these in and I've put out the two vampire spawn that belong here and also uh, Valenta uh, Popovsky which is lovely to say. <laughs> um, and I've generated, let's just unhide her, I've generated her a token image as well as a, uh, as well as a portrait. So, uh, so we've, got, we've got her all sorted, kind of ready to go. Um, vampire spawns are easy, they're straight from the SRD. But what I did need to do with Valenta is look at the module and make some changes. So I have gone through, and this is something I need to do next, is I've gone through and I haven't got the module open in the other window like I was supposed to have. There we go, this one here. Uh, I'm in the wrong place. Do, 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 do. Here she is. So in the Strad Reloaded, the free version, it gives you all of her stat blocks for her first form and second form. So she starts off the fight in, assuming this ends up in a fight, it probably should. Um, she starts off in her first form when she hits zero hit points, she turns into her second form. So I'm going to need to have two versions. Now we've looked at things like token flip and stuff like that, but actually it's a completely different stat block. So I am just going to have a second version of her uh, and then just swap the token out, um, or swap the actor out completely. I think that's just easier. So without boring you too much, what I do need to do is make sure that her stats, her abilities all match. Now I've been through and I've done all of her stats, her saving throws, her um, senses, resistances. I've been through and just checked all of those. Um, not hugely different from a normal vampire spawn anyway, but she does have some extra skills. So weirdly enough, in her first form, which is her fully human form, uh, she actually doesn't get a bite attack. Um, so I can remove that. Oh, first of all, I want to clone her <laughs> before I do that. Um, I put her in monsters. I did have her down here, but I moved her to monsters because she is in fact a monster. There she is. I want to clone her. Uh, duplicate, that's the word. Um, so this one is going to be called whoop, second form. Uh, and I'm going to generate a new picture for that and things like that. So let's get rid of her for the moment because um, I'll come back and do that. And I can do that off screen. Uh, there's not a huge amount of difference. I'm just going to find a new picture, generate a new picture and do what I'm about to do now. So just looking through here, it, ta it talks about um, get find the right place. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
Um, so she gets regeneration, that's easy, that's right there. Um, she gets spider climb, that's easy, that's right there. Sunlight hypersensitivity. Well, the default SRD comes in with vampire weaknesses, so that actually is already there, which is nice. Uh, nimble escape. Now, again, what we need to remember is that I'm not fully automating this, so I'm not using MIDI QOL and stuff. So as long as this one here, for example, there is no SRD for awakened bloodlust. So all I did was nick something that was similar. Uh, can't even remember what it was. Nick something that looked kind of similar, and then I edited it because I, all I needed was the description to remind me when she drops to zero hit points. Her nostrils flare like a bat's. Her claws lengthen. Her eyes begin to glow a dim crimson. So that's my descriptor that I need for generating my second form version. Uh, and then it says her statistics are instantly replaced. So I wanted that in there so I don't bloody forget about it. <laughs> Go, oh yeah, <laughs> forgot she gets to do that. So I've got that in there. Uh, and then under her actions, she uh, gets a multi-attack, which is fine. We know what that is. And again, I don't need that working. But she does get um, a hail of daggers attack which is basically her just throwing daggers around all over the place. So I took a normal dagger, like like this one, um, and I renamed it Hail of Daggers, and I made this into... So what I did, let me show you, because I know not everybody knows how to do this. What I did... What I did is I came into here, I went into details, and I went, actually, because this is her ranged version of the attack... I went in and changed it from simple melee to simple ranged. Um, it is still thrown. I changed her the range here. Active, uh, sorry, the target of one creature. Her range 15 is her normal range for it. I changed that. Um, I changed this to a ranged weapon attack. So it's picking up the right attack formula. And I changed the damage formula to 2d4 rather than 1d4 for a normal um, knife attack. So it was really simple to do that. It was really easy. It's basically um, just its normal knife attack with more damage, but I wanted to have this duplication because she also has a normal dagger melee attack, um, which is its normal damage and everything. So now she's got these two versions, her Hail of Daggers thrown ranged version and then her up close uh, normal dagger one. So that's all in there. Now what I actually do, now I've cloned it, what I actually want to do is she doesn't have a bite attack in this form. And she doesn't have a claw attack. She's all about the daggers. So I can get rid of those. Uh, now, interestingly, she gets a couple of other abilities. One of them is called Tanglefoot, which is one of those abilities that doesn't exist. And I thought, well, what's closest to Tanglefoot? Read in the description. So it says she hurls a bag of writhing, sticky black tar at a point on the ground within 30 feet. The back bursts on impact, covering up to two creatures within five feet of one another with sticky tar and forcing them to succeed on a DC 14 strength saving throw. So that is not that dissimilar from Entangle um, because the idea is, is yeah, yeah, it's going to have a saving throw and everything else. So this is a sensible way to do it if you've got these special monster stuff. Um, and yeah it's like where do you start so i'm going to edit this so i've already put this on her it's under innate spell casting rather than a monster thing it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter um i'm not automating stuff to that extent so it really doesn't make a difference so i am literally going to copy and paste from the module i'm going to replace this so i've got my proper description for this ability I'm going to rename it, uh, and this is called Tanglefoot. Um, <laughs> Tanglefoot. <laughs> uh, so I call it Tanglefoot. Uh, and then I can go into the details, and this is where I can start making some of those changes. So, of course, it reckons it's a spell, um, which I don't need it to be a spell. But I'm going to keep it as a spell for this. And as an innate... Uh, yeah, can't see it. There we go. It's under innate spell casting. So I don't need to worry about memorizing and things. Uh, but you can only do this once per day. So that's fine. You know, I can change the charges and things. Um, so spell preparation mode. Innate spell casting. But I can change this. Um, 
this can be an at will, except it's not. Um, so I'm happy to leave this as innate spell casting for the moment. Because um, I don't need, again, no automation. So I don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, one action, uh, and it is an action, and it's an action that can be used part of her multi attack. Uh, target is right, so we're going to leave all that. Let's just check the gain. So within 30 feet, so target is 30 feet. Um, the bag bursts on impact two creatures within five feet of one another. So the target, I've got a 30 foot square. That's not actually what I want. I want a 10 foot square. The range is 30 feet. That's better. <laughs> Um, and how long does it last for? Well, it doesn't actually say. A target can repeat the saving throw uh, on each of its turns until it ends. It doesn't tell you how long it lasts. So let's leave it as a minute. Fine, whatever. Limited uses. Uh, once per day. There we go. Uh, consume resource um, item uses. Uh, I probably don't even need to bother. Um, yep, so it will consume, so it has limited uses, one of one per day, so it can use it once per day, and it's going to resource, it's going to consume one tangle foot per day, that's, so every time I use it, that's it, she's done for the day. Yes, I want it to prompt for a template that I'm going to put down, and it is a saving throw that they need, and it is a strength saving throw DC 14, so that's all what I need, lovely jubbly. Um, <laughs> and now if I go to effects, this is the bit that actually, um, this is tells you what it actually kind of, way oops, it's over there. Uh, this is the bit that kind of, I, the idea of how it works. So it says, um, sticky tar forcing each target to succeed on a saving throw or be restrained. So this is already doing restrain. This is already doing it. So what I can do is I can I can edit this description if I want to. Um, yeah, and I, I, again, do I care? I don't need to worry about it. So this all actually will work um, as it is in theory without me doing anything at all. We need to test it though, don't we, right? We, we should be smart and we should test it. Okay, so she's going to cast this. Uh, let's not consume the resource. I don't need to concentrate either, actually. I can turn that off. Place that measured template, and that should be okay, something like that. Um, job done. I'm going to ask for the saving throws. You know, it, it's kind of asking for it here already. It's got the effect in Tangle. Um, so I, do, I will change that name of the actual effect as well. Uh, let's say that you were in here. Um, you're targeted because of it and we apply that effect it's going to give us entangled um, because that's what the effect is called but actually we want to change that to say restrained now there is a challenge about applying a restrained condition through spells and stuff at the moment without uh, full automation and without everything else um, and that's to do with the change but I, I, we know they're restrained that's fine. Again, without the full automation, it makes it so much easier because I know what's happened. I don't need, I uh, don't need to do it as long as I've got the icon telling me, you know, in this case that um, that uh, that they are entangled. Although I'm going to change that tangle foot. Um, yeah, fine. I'm happy with that. That will that will work nicely for me. I uh, don't need to consume resource, but I can. Again, it's asking for the saving throw and everything else. So we can clear that. That's fine. Uh, we can get rid of that template. That's fine. Uh, my poor vampire spawn. Let's let's remove that from you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, undo all of that, nice and easy. And I can go back into this tangle foot. No. Nope. And do another little bit of editing. So sometimes it's just kind of playing with these things. Uh, concentration. I want to turn that off. Okay, didn't want that concentration on, did I? So I can turn that off from there. And this is why we always test. So we test it and then we know that actually we're, it's gonna do what we wanna do. So we turn that off and then in here, we're gonna call that, in fact, I could call I could call it restrained. Yeah, happy to do that. Um, and I can change this icon. 
this might have been a mistake going, oh, I'm going to change this icon and doing it right now without uh, finding what I want to change it to first. Because it does say it's like black tar, doesn't it? And I'm sure there's going to be something. Uh, I'm in magic nature. That's probably not the right one. Uh, is it? Um, time, sonic, perception, nature, movement, lighting, life. Earth might be a good one. We might be able to find something that looks kind of gooey. You like like oil or something like that. And if not, I won't hang around forever doing this. I will move on if I can't find something quite quickly, and I'll do that off of screen. But that you can see that you can just go in and change that image if you want to do that. Um, and we've called we've now said that that's restrained, so it's going to be a bit more obvious what the effect is. Um, duration was alright. The effect was fine. Uh, good, good, good. Right. So what we want to do, what I want to do, is also have a um, automated animation for the spell. Now I've just written Tanglefoot, so there isn't going to be one. So what I can do is I can create my own one completely by coming in here to do that if I wish to, and that's going to be templates. Um, and then source animation, probably not. Uh, this is going to be a square template, and now I can pick something that is going to, you know, let's go to preview. Is that what I want? No, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> poisons, probably not. But I can find something that's going to work for me for in this instance and give me a pretty good... Um, kind of example. Grease might be, look, yeah, there we go. You cover them in tar. That's pretty good. Uh, purple, grey. Oh, that's green. <laughs> grey. I think grey might work. So we should be able to do that and just say this is the animation we want. Now let's check the options here um, and just make sure. So we do want to do persistent um, and attach it to the template. So this animation will stay on the template until we delete the template, which is absolutely fine. So let's submit that. And then let's try casting this again. Consume resource, it does ask for we want, doesn't ask for concentration anymore. Brilliant. Let's cast that spell and then let's stick that down here. There we get our goo. So within five feet of each other, they could both be gooed. Uh, it's very easy to see who um, who is the victim of that spell right now. So let's just get rid of that. Now, what I didn't notice, and I was supposed to be looking out for, but I was too busy talking, was when I do that, yeah, it doesn't auto-target the person in here to let them know that they're the ones who got to make the saving throw. When we automate stuff, we can get we can do that. So we put a template down, uh, target the things under the template. Again, we're not using automation, uh, so we don't need to worry, which is fine. Um, but just so you know, you can. All right, so we've got her sorted. Oh, blimey, what happened to my voice? So move you back over there, thank you very much, uh, and turn you around. So Tanglefoot, that's one way that we can do some of these things. Is, is just by picking something similar and editing it. Now there is a couple of other abilities that this individual has. One of them is called Alchemist's Firebomb. Um, she hurls a flask of concentrated Alchemist's Fire at a point within 30 feet. Well, we've got Alchemist's Fire. I've renamed this and just called it so I know exactly which you know it matches for me. Uh, I don't need to bother with the description probably, but I do want to change a couple of these things. So when she does this one, a flask concentrated alchemist fire to a point within 30 feet. Okay, so the range of this is 30 feet. So we can change that. Uh, the shard shatters on imp, sorry, wrong one. Um, the vial shatters on impact and detonates in a 10 foot radius. So this one is going to be, we want this to be a, a template. Now, is this already a template? This is a one person attack. Um, rather than anything else. So we we need to kind of change the way that this works. So again, one creature, it's like, well, actually it's not. It's going to be a area that's going to be a radius, so or a sphere, we can do a sphere. Um, so in radius feet, how big was it? What did I say? Uh, a 10 foot radius. Okay, brilliant. Um, do we want to destroy it on empty? No, don't. I don't want to destroy it off there. Template prompt. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Limited uses. Now, this again, this is one per day that she can do. Resource consumption. Yes, item uses. 
once of the alchemist's firebomb it will use that so she can't use it again that day perfect Woohoo! Uh, but it's not a spell attack so ranged weapon attack is absolutely fine for that um, now this is going to uh, duh, duh, duh. so this is going to call for a dexterity saving throw so um, duh, 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 duh. we did that didn't we ranged weapon attack is going to call for a saving throw it's going to be a dexterity saving throw the actual damage this does is ah, it's 2d6 so it's like double alchemist fire so it's 2d6 fire Okay, and the saving throw is dexterity, and the uh, it's a it's a flat fourteen. Okay, so that should work. And again, like with the tangle foot, once we know that this is going to work, we don't have any effects. We don't need it. It's a straight damage. Once we know that this works, because we're going to test it. Get back over here. Actually, we're going to test it. We're going to don't consume resource, but it would. Uh, we're going to place that. Have I made that too big? We can slap that down and you can see it's enabling us to roll damage. And it's asking for the dexterity saving throw, DC 14, etc. Uh, and then anybody who fails it, I can apply that. That was rubbish damage. Um, so again, it's not difficult to do this. It, it takes a bit of fiddling around. But where you've got these special abilities that individuals have... It's a bit of a pest. <laughs> now, what you might be asking yourself is like, oh, great. So have, have you saved it? No, this is only sitting on this character at the moment because I, it's not over here in my items. So once I've got this working, so if I go to Tanglefoot, got that working, slap that over there. OK, so Tanglefoot is now a thing <laughs> and I can apply it to other people without having to come back into this character. OK, so edit again. Now, come on, brain, target. Um, was 10 foot sphere did it actually say 10 foot and detonates in a 10 foot radius okay yeah just want to check that's what gave us oh it does say 10 does it say 10 foot radius because that's really important detonates a 10 foot radius so that is from the point of impact 10 foot out from that so that is correct that's what we actually want uh, or at least that's what it's telling us it wants so what's the last thing i need to do on this i want to well i don't have to but what i'm going to do is go in for my alchemist firebomb um and i want to i want to add i don't have to but i want to add uh, i'm going to add a template for circle this time uh, and we're going to see if we can find we go, we've got fireball um Let's pick orange and look at this. Boom. I mean, we can do other things. Uh, what about no debris? Well, that's just going to be persistent. We've got a loop. Put that back to orange. Yeah, so we don't want that. We want an explode. Not dark green. We've got dark red. Orange is much more fire. And then it's going to disappear. And, and then we can get rid of that template. So that's good. We can do that, absolutely. No problem. Do I want it persistent? Uh, no, I don't want it persistent. I want it to do its thing and then bugger off, if you'll excuse the expression. <laughs> oh, this is so professional. Okay, so let's close that. And then let's try that again. So uh, actually, uh, da 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 so the same weight one of uh, it's got we've got one of them at the moment let's just see I'm gonna back it up <laughs> consume resource and then we're gonna throw it out there we get our animation it's a one-off job done lovely jubbly we know who's gonna get hit because we've got the template for that uh, and there we go so here we've got this charges zero of one so it has appropriately reduced those charges why have I got never smoking bottle here oh right okay because the other thing that we had actually um, so she's got why have I got alchemists fire oh I know I know why 
because there's also a Thunderstone ability that she has. So I'm going to get rid of Ever Smoking Bottle because that was crazy. But I left this on here so that actually I can do the same and take this Alchemist's Fire because the mechanics are quite similar. In fact, if I was really smart, what I would do is delete this one and go, we've done the work on this one. So let's, uh, let's duplicate this one and edit this. So again, I don't need to worry about changing all the description because nobody's going to see it but me. It's not going to be available to the players. Uh, and they called this a Thunderstone ability, but it's not the same as the Thunderstone magic item. So, uh, yeah, just to be a little bit confusing. Eh? Uh, it doesn't matter that it thinks it's a potion, because again, the players won't see that. Um, you know, we've got it down there as a potion. Fine, whatever. Don't care. So what does this do? She hurls a, a crystal shard at a creature, object, or surface within 30 feet. So range, 30 feet. We've already got that. Fabulous. Um, the shard shatters on impact, blast of concussive energy. Each creature within 10 foot. So it's very, very similar. Uh, each creature within 10 foot must succeed on a DC 14 constitution. So we can change that to constitution. Good. Um or be knocked prone and pushed 10 feet away. Okay, so this is this is a tricky one. Um, because, so this, weirdly enough, this doesn't actually do any damage. Um, yeah, which is a bit weird. So we should be able to do that. Whoop, we don't want, uh, yeah, sorry, Paul, we're gonna use the dexterity modifier. That's absolutely fine. So they're going to be knocked and push knocked prone and push 10 feet away from that point a creature that fails its save is also deafened until the start of her next turn now if we were fully automating this we would absolutely be able to say oh this effect is going to be on you until your next turn um but we're not doing that so we're just going to have to do it out. we're going to have to do it the old way which is absolutely fine I don't have any problem um, and we can add our effects on here, passive effects and stuff. But again, do you know what? This is a one-off, once-a-day ability. She's going to use this once in this entire encounter and then not use it anymore. So I don't care. I know what it does. Or at least I will know what it does when I appropriately copy, you can copy and paste slowly, um, and just edit this description. This is going to be a, a significant fight. So I'm going to be ready for it. Oh yeah, that's what it does. It's right here in our character sheet. It's easy for me to see the description and go, oh yeah, that's what it does. Uh, but I do want to, for this, I want to customise what this one is going to do. So there's no global match for Thunderstone because it's not a thing. Um, so what I can do is, uh, do I want Fireball? Um, the Explode is good, but I haven't really got... You know, we saw that. We haven't got really got an appropriate kind of uh, one that looks right for this. So we need to find something else. Uh, and we will. Um, vortex. That's kind of, yeah, we don't want Vortex. That's not what we want at all. Uh, stun. Yeah, no, that's just uh, lovely little effects. We want something that kind of, well, I mean, it's a snowflake burst. I mean, you could use something like that. You could. <laughs> Not gonna. Um, yeah, that's going the wrong... Yeah, that's not what I want. Boom. You could... Again, you could choose to use that. Outpulse. That sounds a bit more like it. Um, white, blue. Boom. Boom. What about number one? Yeah, not a fan of that. I think uh, Outpulse, number two, yellow, white, no, white, blue, bam. Bam. I like that. That We're going, I'm going with that, all right? 
Now under, <laughs> under options, again, it's like an explosion, so I don't need it to be persistent. Um, it is going to be on the template anyway, because that's the animation type I've got. So we can smack that down, we can close that, and we can go, right, okay, Thunderstone ability. Uh, it's asking you to consume resource or consume available usage. That's interesting. I've done something slightly quirky there. Let's have a look what I did because it's kind of wanted me to consume twice. Um, not Alchemist Firebomb. That's why I want it to consume Thunderstone. That makes more sense. Okay, I just hadn't updated that. There we go. So consume the resource, place the measure template. Bosh. Um, and then if we smack it on this poor deer. Boom, there we go. And again, we can now follow through the actions of the saving throw, describe what happens, etc., without that animation continually playing. And once we've covered everything, bam, gone. Sorted. So, uh, bit dirty. It's it's not brilliantly smooth. It's certainly not MIDI QOL, well, Chris's pre made DAE kind of beautiful from an automated point of view. But you, you don't have to do that. <laughs> You don't have to go nuts with everything. Um, this is going to work just fine because those things are only going to be used once um, in this entire encounter. It's going to work just fine. So anyway, I need to hide you again, of course. I need to go on. I need to do the lighting in this area, and then I'm going to push on with uh, Blinsky's Toys, the Burgomaster's Mansion, and those things. But I just thought it was important to give you a little update and take you through what I'm doing with those bits just to get them ready um, without going nuts. Um, we could go nuts. It's not worth the effort it, for me in this situation. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take care. I will see you in the next one.